Hey, this is Dino, and this is part two describing how to use Stackdriver from within an Apigee Edge API proxy. Okay, so here I am on the um, documentation page for Stackdriver for the REST APIs. Uh, this uh, particular entry describes, or this particular page describes how to write a log entry into Stackdriver. And as you can see, it's pretty simple. Just send a, uh, it's an HTTP post to this endpoint with a standard request body. So very simple uh, and a lot of nice examples here, uh, some good flexibility. The only tricky part about this is uh, the authorization. And that is the token that's required, how you get that token and the scopes that are required on that token. So um, what we have done in part one was uh, we constructed uh, or set up a service account in Stackdriver and gave it access to the logging APIs in that project. Uh, and we've got all that set up. So uh, let me talk to you a little bit more about how this is going to work. So the way Google dispenses tokens for the Stackdriver API and other APIs in the GCP is via um, a uh, JWT profile for OAuth 2.0 client authentication. That's RFC 7523, and basically what it what it means is uh, you the client generates and self signs a JWT and sends that in uh, as a means for requesting uh, a standard OAuth 2.0 access token or bearer token. That's an opaque token. So client is very similar to the client credentials grant. Uh, that is described in RFC 6749, the OAuth 2.0 RFC. Very similar to that, except rather than sending in the client ID and the secret, um, the client must send in a JWT. Uh, and when that JWT is valid, uh, Google, in this case, will, the OAuth token dispenser, will generate an access token and return that, and that access token has an expiry. So let's uh, look in a little bit more detail. Um, by the way, this is the, uh, the GitHub repo that has all this information in it. Um, in a little bit more detail, the JWT uh, must include the client email, that's a unique email, as the issuer claim. It must have this string as the audience, this uh, or one of those other scopes uh, as a scope claim. It must expire with, within no more than 300 seconds. If you make a JWT and have it expire in an hour, Google will reject it. Uh, and it must be signed with the client's private key. So here's an example of what it might look like uh, without the signature. Uh, you can see it's RSA 256 signature method. And then we've got the, uh, the expiry that is within um, the time constraints. Uh, so once that JWT is generated, that's generated all on the client side, uh, the client sends in a request for token and passes in the JWT in the form parameter like this. And if all that is valid, if the audience scope issuer and expiry all look good, if the signature is correct, then googleapis.com will return an access token and it looks like this. Okay, so that access token is then usable uh, when you invoke APIs on the stack driver for uh, writing. And this is what that request might look like. So what I've set up here is an Apigee Edge um, API proxy with a sequence of steps that manages all this, that, that obtains um, the token as required uh, by generating the JWT and sending it in to the token dispensary endpoint, uh, retrieving the token and the expiry, caching it, and then using that token to write log messages into Stackdriver. So let's have a look at what it looks like. Uh, that's the quick summary. Here is a, a proxy endpoint, and I've set uh, the sequence up in the um, post flow and the response. Um, obviously, you can put this wherever you want, but it probably belongs in the response if you're logging. Uh, so let's just walk through the, the different policy steps and the conditions and so on. The first thing I do is get some stack driver settings, and that's things like the project ID and the um, log ID. Um, next thing we'll do is uh, check the cache 
to see if there is a viable access token in cash. If there is, we'll just use it. Now, if it's not viable, then we have to go through that, that uh, set of steps where we generate a, a JWT, sign it, and, um, and send that into the token dispensary. So that's what I'm doing here. First thing we'll do is we'll retrieve the private key from an encrypted KVM. That is a secret. So we'll get the private key, use that private key in the um, this step where it generates the, um, the JWT. And let me show you what that looks like. Uh, so this is just a, a Java call out and uh, kind of standard stuff. This is using the um, signed JWT uh, call out that is available here. Uh, on GitHub on this link. Um, okay, so the the claims are going to be the JWT issuer. That's the um, the unique cl uh, client email, the email associated to that service account. The audience, that's a fixed string. We know what that needs to be. The expires in has to be less than 300 seconds. We'll put it at 90. You could probably use 15 seconds here, but just in case the token request takes a while, um, a little bit of safety there. And then finally, um, the scope claim. And you'll see that um, issuer audience and expires in are all sort of, uh, they use this simple um, property name for the, for the claims, whereas the scope claim uh, uses this claim underscore thing. And the reason for that is these three, issuer audience and expires in, are standard claims defined in the uh, JWT standard whereas scope is not, it's not a standard claim, uh, but JWT is designed to be extensible. So you can add any claim you want, any kind of claim you want. And uh, that's what this is, just a custom claim that'll be in the JWT. All right, so those are the claims we wanna insert. We have the private key that uh, we retrieved from the KVM uh, to do the signature. And uh, the rest of this stuff is just uh, what class to call and where the jar is. Um, so that generates the JWT. At that point, what we do is uh, send that JWT to uh, the token dispensary uh, to retrieve the access token. And so this is very simple, just a post. You can see the endpoint that we're sending it to and the parameters in the form that we need, um, super simple. Um, then I won't go into too much more detail on some of these other things. Um, extract the access token and the expiry. Um, this is just a, a check to see if we got a successful response. Um, insert the newly acquired token into cache and then finally log to uh, stack driver. And that looks like, um, I'll show you what that looks like. That's also a very simple service call out um, where we just insert the bearer token here in the authorization header. This is what the payload looks like according to the, um, uh, the reference inf information that I showed you a little bit earlier. And then uh, this is the endpoint where that post needs to be sent. Uh, so that's how you log to Stackdriver. And uh, most of these steps, uh, what we would like to do is avoid the costly steps associated with generating a JWT and getting an additional access token. So that's why we're using the cache. So that's what it looks like um, in uh, the proxy flow. Um, what I've got is um, in the GitHub repo, I've got that API proxy plus a couple of different tools that allow me to uh, provision uh, this example in an Apogee Edge organization for you. So what you want to do is, uh, after you clone the repo, uh, you want to run the provision tool. And um, this is a Node.js tool, so you need Node on your system. Uh, there are a couple things that are required. You're going to need to authenticate. I have my um, credentials in .NET RC, so I'll just use the dash .n to um, retrieve my username and password from the .NET RC file. Um, but you can specify your username and password uh, explicitly if you like. Also, I'm going to specify my organization. It's one in the Apogee Edge cloud that I have rights to and the environment. And then the last thing I need that's required is the uh, the JSON file that I downloaded in at the end of uh, part one, the part one screencast. So that is in, where did I put that? Stack driver. And I think it's here. And what this tool is going to do is extract the issuer 
and the um, that is the email address and the private key and uh, provision them into the KVMs. One of them will be a, an encrypted KVM for secrets and the other one is uh, is unencrypted. So all that stuff gets put in there and we also verify that the cache exists. So this is just some setup that um, works on the organization uh, to prepare it for uh, accepting the um, the API proxies. So the next thing we'll do is uh, run the, the, the import and deploy tool and another Node.js script. So similarly, you'll need um, the credentials and the organization and the environment. And if you run it uh, normally, it knows exactly where the API proxy is. So what it's going to do is zip that uh, API proxy code up and uh, import it into Apigee Edge. Uh, that may take a little while and then uh, deploy it and once deployed it should be invocable so that takes just a few seconds about 10 seconds let me now uh, flip over to uh, my organization and we'll, we'll hop over to the stackdriver um, API proxy that was just deployed revision 13 that's the one um, Actually, let me let me walk you through the um, the develop uh, tab, and you can see this is exactly the same code that that we just pushed up uh, that was stored on my hard drive. Same sequence, and it's all being done in the um, post flow for the response. These are all the policies. All right, so let's turn on tracing just so we can see um, this thing in action. And now we will invoke that uh, API. So let me. Uh, Type that in. Uh, it'll be my organization, um, followed by the uh, base path, and then I need a T1. This is going to accept uh, content type of application JSON, so we'll need to put that, uh, and then the payload, uh, the JSON payload, which is a hash with exactly one member payload. Uh, and this is the thing that's going to be embedded in the message. So this will appear in the stack driver log. So close that out. And uh, that's my curl command. And um, let me run this again with a different payload message number two. Put that in there. And then one last message so we've invoked it three times um, and let's look at the trace so the first one this is the first message that went through um, you'll see uh, it does the checking for the content type it extracts the log payload that's the message that i was trying to uh, log and then uh, what it's doing is looking in the cache to see do we have a valid token and we don't all right, so then it needs to go through all those steps, retrieve the private key, um, run the JWT generation step, transmit that JWT, and this is what it looks like. These are the claims. Transmit that JWT to the token dispensary endpoint at Google APIs. Uh, get the response. This is the response, the success response we saw. So get the token out of that response. Um, insert it into cache for next time and then invoke the logging API, the entries colon write API, uh, with the message that we want to insert. And then, uh, and then we're done. So that's the first uh, invocation. And what you'll see is uh, some of these steps take a bit of time. So let's have a look. The checking of the cache takes just a few seconds, um, a few milliseconds, sorry, pretty quick. Uh, but seeing that it's empty, then I need to get the encrypted KVM. And that can take some time. It says here 36 milliseconds because it is encrypted. Uh, it needs to decrypt, and that can take some time. Um, generating the stack driver JWT, generating the JWT, that looks like that took 145 milliseconds. It won't happen like that every time, but um, certainly that's a not insignificant amount of time. Uh, this is where we uh, request the access token, and that takes 140 milliseconds. So these are all kind of uh, not insignificant amounts of time that we'd like to avoid. That's why we're doing the cache. Finally, um, 
we logged a stack driver and that's going to be a remote call also. Uh, I can't skip that one, but that one takes 139 milliseconds. So that's the first request. And let's look at the next one, the successive request that I sent. At this point, we check the cache and yep, sure enough, we have a token that's available there. So we can skip all of these steps. This, you know, these that took 36 milliseconds, 100 milliseconds, 140 milliseconds, and so on. We skip all that and we go right to the, um, the post of the log message itself, which takes in, in this time, this time it took uh, 177 milliseconds. So you can see it's much faster. Um, ideally, um, you know, you'd, you'd want to run this in the post client flow. So the request doesn't incur that delay at all. But uh, today, uh, that's going to be a service call out. And uh, this third one, you can see it uses the cache as well. So um, th this will continue to behave this way until the token expires within uh, an hour. All right, so um, last thing I'll show you is uh, the, um, the log viewer of this project. And uh, I'll go to console.cloud.google.com slash log slash viewer. This is the stack driver uh, log viewer. And uh, I've already had this page open, but let me, let me refresh it. And you can see these are the messages that I just sent in succession. Um, this will appear in the stack driver log message number two and one last message. So this is this is what you you uh, obtain in stack driver when you log from Apogee Edge in that way. Uh, so that's that's the interesting part. Um, I will kind of give you a quick tour of what was provisioned in this environment by those scripts. Um, there's one. Uh, the KVM uh, maps, we created a secrets map, and this is encrypted, so we cannot see the value, and that's on purpose because um, the private key is a, is a secret. Um, and then secondly, the settings. And this is where the issuer, the log ID, and the project ID uh, get inserted. And all that stuff is coming from that JSON file that was downloaded from uh, the stack driver in part one. Um, one comment, why you would want to use, why you would ever want to use a non-encrypted versus encrypted? Well, with a non-encrypted, it's really easy to see what's in there. So you can verify visually the settings that you've set, uh, whereas you just cannot do that with an encrypted KVM, as you can see here. Second thing uh, I'll point out is that it's faster to retrieve these settings than it is to retrieve an encrypted setting. And the reason for that is these are cacheable and they're not encrypted in the first place. So um, first time I retrieve this uh, in, a, in a policy, it's going to be relatively fast, but then it's inserted into cache. So it's very fast on subsequent tries. Uh, whereas with the encrypted KVM, the first time, uh, every time uh, uh, a key is retrieved, um, it's going to be first decrypted and then transmitted. So both of those things can take some amount of time. And we saw 36 milliseconds in the trace, and that's that's not too unusual. So just be aware uh, of those kind of differences with the encrypted KVM and the, the standard KVM. So that's it. Uh, this has been part two of the screencast showing how to log to Stackdriver from Apigee Edge Proxies. I hope this helps. And we'll see you next time.